which you need to be very clear about, uh, like Mignon. Mm. But, you know, um, mm. okay. it's, it's less, you know, for example, for Judas Maccabeus, I don't think you would need that much okay. detail. So let's play do this. So find your lovely position, however you want to do it. Bad trainer. Left foot forward. <laughs> No, 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 I'm, no, I'm just, okay. I'm, I'm, also, I'm just trying to find, find if uh, looking for my own formulas to, to describe it, and it's just bloody hard yeah. to describe it because it's different. It's going to be different for every single person. What that? I think it's the ratio is dangerous to overthink it. Yeah, I yeah. think so too. But let's yeah. just review from rest position feet, penguin feet. Just step your left foot so that the instep of your left foot is in line with the front of your right foot. Yeah, so it's like half a foot forwards. 
And the point about doing that is that you have then turned your hips slightly towards your right. Yeah, by doing that, yeah. that's what you've done. Yeah. No. Yeah. Hang on. I, I... Hang on. So, when you do that, what you're doing is your tummy button is facing slightly to your right. Because you're counteracting the feeling that people have if you have your feet equal, that you, you feel too much that the violin is out to the left too much. So what you're doing is bringing that down to the hips, that twist slightly, so that you can have a more natural spine alignment. I thought it was roughly that the L, left L, but roughly, and sort of it should left roughly over the mm -hmm. left toe. Exactly. And that's, yeah, that's it, was, it, isn't it? And yeah, like two fists apart. Yeah. And if you've got your if you've got your feet completely in line, yeah, and you put your left yeah. elbow over your left. Yeah. Um, foot, mm. then you've just got yeah. quite a lot of um, discomfort perhaps just in the upper spine, whereas if you do it from here, it's spreading it more. just do the last two that I've already ha. done as well and then we've got um, more than half the book. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks Ed. 
So, Judas Maccabeus, I mean, like I, said, like I was saying to you, Mimi, I wouldn't expect loads of detail in your teaching points. Um, your isolation is bar 11 to 16, and the major point of that is practicing preparing high three, then four. I really recommend that you get the children to put the three on first and then the four, because then they will be much more likely to be in tune than they will if you do it the other way around, even though that's what you need in the piece in terms of the notes that they play. So this box you would practice like this. Now, practice with the bow off, stretch your three, put your four touching it, and then... And then it's up to you if you want to finish the phrase or just go up to the next bar 14. Um, so you put it on the D natural and then you push it up? No, I put it on a D sharp. Put it on a D sharp yeah. straight away? Yeah. yeah. Most of them will still have a three tape by now. In fact, I would be a bit worried if they didn't have a three tape at this stage. I think they need the mm. three tape still. So you just can, you can literally show them, right, you've got to get it in the hole above the three tape. Do you think it's just the only strike Exactly. Normally by the end of book one, I try and take off the two tape, and so they would definitely have one and three um, for the G major section of book one. And then some of them need a spot or a, I, I tend to put a spot on the A rather than a stripe for the four. But quite a lot of them will have one, three and four at this stage. And then it mostly is when the one comes off by you we take it off and don't replace it, or you really need to get rid of it with minium. The kind of exercises that teachers, that teachers, <laughs> that children need before playing this piece, if they're not naturally, I don't mean naturally by birth, naturally from how you've taught them, making a beautiful deep sound with a heavy elbow, there's lots of elbow, um, semicircles in the air and you know twinkles that are really thinking about that heavy elbow putting their elbow in your hand so that you can feel the weight um, all of those kind of exercises uh, retake twinkles are really helpful um, and then if they struggle with the up ups you might play a twinkle that's um, to make sure that they've got those And the weight goes into two, I'll just write it on the board. Did someone take a picture of the board? I did, yeah. Did you put it in the chat? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um. <laughs> well, if you've got the picture, it doesn't matter. You can still do that. So the time triangle. Um, Kit, just have a look at this piece one. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about how you create the sound and how you 
and change the sound. Weight, speed, and distance from bridge. And then the weight I normally do this, you've got the squeezy bow hand and the heavy elbow. So when you first introduce this in about middle of book two, we're just trying to get them to get the three things and what they mostly miss is speed, which is hilarious because you can say, okay, I'm going to make a really big sound. So I'm going to squeeze my bow, I'm going to have a heavy elbow, I'm going to go close to the bridge and we're playing loudly. And they'll say, yeah. And I'm like, can you hear a loud sound? And they'll say, yeah. <laughs> You'll say, how loud is that sound? And their parent by this point is like wetting themselves in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go, I can't hear any sound. And then they're like, oh yeah, you have to move the bow.
can't move, just don't sit straight down. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 I think she's so that's what you can see. What I can see is that all your fingers are coming much right. closer together. So <laughs> that's when you get that, and that's just pushing and pulling. It's not actually controlling. Whereas when you just think about the bow more funny a bit more, yeah. um, then you have three different elements and then the thumb. So, like, I mean, obviously you've got five, but the middle yeah. two function mostly together. Mm -hmm. So if you just think about those finger spaces there, yeah. you will have more control over creating the sound that you want rather than just getting the sound that you get. Right, thank you. Thank you. Get wicked. Thank you. Nice to have, innit? Oh, shocker, isn't it? Yeah, I'll be here in a minute and we'll go mental. Okay, good. So, um... My first question, is that uh, the speed that you always play at? No, I tend to play a bit faster. Yeah. Um... And Dante Pastoral, I mean, it's a funny, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Because the recording's quite fast. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Is do we think that this is actually Andante? Um, is it rushed to record it? Yeah, that's what I, I think. I had this very opposite thing to you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, definitely, more or less bowing. So it's phrasing like within a slur. Um, it's a different style of an up bow, isn't it? It's a different style of up bow style. It's definitely. not just an up bow, up bow into a strong down bow, it's, it's a longer sort of... Just an up bow. It's just an up bow. Yeah. yeah. But also maintaining the sound as well. I think that so it doesn't... I mean, I know you want the phrasing, but you want the... Yeah. You know, quite a consistent... Yeah, definitely. And the phrasing, I think, is quite new. Mm. This is really a lyrical piece that is a, a quite a departure from what they've done before. Um, it's the complicated bow patterns, isn't it? I think they, I mean, I certainly find them difficult to memorize. Yeah, so I would have the boxes, well, you've got them on my, on my record, on my um, yeah. book. But I think that, um, you know, slur, 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 separate, slur, 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 separate, half down. It's a good thing to teach them to actually just be able to sing. Um, because they get, they get that without too much trouble. There's more forms in this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the last bar and a half, two bars. Oh, that's that big. String crossings at the tip, but still trying to keep it smooth. Would you um, talk about the four at all? I do talk about the four. So the box I have bar. No, oh, sorry, the form. A form. I, 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 I'm, yeah, the forms, yeah. I may know it. This is the storm. Miserable. <laughs> um, I don't tend to talk about the form very no. much. No, very much. I mean, again, it's a, it's a sort of slightly more um, exciting version of the sandwich piece. We might talk about that. Um, but to be honest, they've got enough to yeah. think about. No, no, I just wanted to, because they um, just in the teaching books before, so they always wanted to know what the form was. 
Um, <laughs> but, but what I thought you were asking about was fours, fours yeah. and I do think it's a really great place for them to put the four down by itself for the first time here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and either with the three on as well, or just yeah. by itself. I don't feel strongly about either of those. Okay, so but, independent four. Yeah, but I do yeah. want, well, either independent or helped by three. Okay. But I do want them to find that four there and then open E. So the first one you do four and then bar eight you do an open. And, oh no, sorry, actually, sorry. Halfway through bar eight, is that okay. right? Yeah. Great. Um, the exercises at the bottom of this page, page 11, I think are really useful if you've got children who are struggling with their intonation. I'll be honest, I would mostly do it once with most of my students because mostly I'm on about intonation all the time so they do, don't need this to reinforce that because we do it in everything. I, I don't really know the point of this exercise and I know that sounds, uh, I don't like to admit that but I've often looked at that and I thought, I don't quite understand. Well I think it's literally just to practice finding those ringing notes on the low twos, which if you haven't done that in the, in the twinkles, I mean not the twinkles, the minuets. Uh, that's what I mean. I wouldn't. I, I kind of do them because they like to do what's in the book. Yeah, um, the I, I don't use them all the time, and I certainly don't do the underneath version. It's more for the intonation for the fours, I think. Well, I don't teach the underneath version for the fours, like the. That just makes me feel really. Um, stuck in my left hand. I don't, you know, they're not doing thirds or anything yet. I don't really understand why you would want to practice that sort of clamping. And often, you remember as well, they're on small violins, the strings are often a bit too high, their fourth fingers are really weak. I think that's a really a dangerous kind of recipe for disaster teaching loads of these fourth fingers. Right, um, that's the. You can come in now. Hi, darling. We see the music thing. Oh, in my bag right here. Unhelpful. Sorry. Hey now. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Glad you're How feeling you a bit better. Oh, a bit, bit less muscle. All right. Oh, I'm going home. Thank you. You're going home. Yeah. I'll see you later. Are you, are you taking the dog, yeah? Yeah. The, uh, hanging in my room. Ready? Speedy. And there's a. That's all right. I'll leave. I'll leave. Thank you. Cool. Bye. Okay. So I would personally not use the fourth finger parts of these exercises. I would just maybe do them once so that they don't take them off, basically. Not Any more questions about the music? I think the other thing to answer your question, Mimi, about those these is so that they get them in, they get that kind of tune in their head so that when they're doing the, um, in book four and five and six and stuff, there's like, um, Yeah, so it's kind of just to get the, the tune in their heads as well. Okay. I have to say again, I use loads of other shifting exercises. I don't rely on that as my main shifting exercise. No, I don't think it's the most fun for them. No, nothing. It's okay. Really <laughs> some of them love it. It's sort of meditative. It's a bit like scales, you know. Some of the kids really like scales. Most of them are like. Eh. Let's do hunter's chorus. You need to go. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for coming. I was pausing. <laughs> to say goodbye. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>
point to help them memorise the bowing, and also us, is yes, that every new phrase starts on an up bow. So that means that you have to consider the end of 16 to be a longer phrase rather than a new phrase, but if you do think that, which I do genuinely musically as well, then that means that as long as you start each new phrase on an up bow, your bowing will take care of itself. Yeah. Anytime, if either of you or any of you are thinking, I'm not sure that I understand the teaching points properly, look at the video of my piece. Uh, There's a piece recording of every piece up to the end of book six, certainly, maybe seven, on my YouTube channel now. So right. you can just see how I play it, it's on there. Right. And you'll be able to see the bow distribution and the. And please, if you have questions, please ask me because some of them are quite old, so I may have changed what I do. Please don't be polite and think, hmm, I wonder why Kate is doing that like that while well, I'm. Don't ask her because she'll be so offended. I really won't. I would really like to know if you come across something that seems weird. Yeah. I just find myself coming in here and going, well, now I'm playing with people. Like, oh, oh. If you, don't, if, you, if you haven't got that bat off, you don't you think you've got something, you play it, it sounds right, you've done what you think you've got by ear, and somebody says, well, that's upside down. Yeah. yeah. And that's really important to recognise for the children as well that they, especially when they're starting to memorise things, they need, like, intellectual sort of hooks to remember things as well as just playing it by ear yeah. that you know videos are so helpful because they may go home and think that they've got the bone for this completely right and then they'll only realize that they haven't in their private lesson or in their group lesson yeah. and if they do it with a video then it will become clear where they're doing something different and it's the same with memory later on you know you can play the Valdier minor and miss out large chunks of it by yourself because the music makes sense it's just that you've taken the wrong turn yeah. and then you don't realize unless you're playing with someone else or with the recording mm -hmm. that you've done that mm -hmm. um you, you played the three of the uh, minuets of book one into one yeah singular performance <laughs> you can indeed yeah. i'd quite like to teach my group that one day <laughs> like we present the three minuets <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be quite yeah. fun okay so um the tricky things are what um, fast and crossing slurred. Good. Mimi? Um, the, um, well, if you, the, um, the, uh, that, that bar 25. With yeah. The, um, with the, with the low, the combination of the left hand with the, the low two. Yeah. Uh, the placement of the three and the low two. And with, with that, with that bowing pattern. Definitely. And even if you don't do the lifts, yeah. even if you don't do the lifts until review, it's very unusual to hear someone playing the first time that they learn it. You're all either going to get this, yeah, that happens a lot, or you go, or they start on a C natural and then gradually work up to a C sharp. You hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. So it really does need um, to be in a box. Yeah. And they need to know what it is that they're looking for. So and I think smaller bows is really helpful for that. And on the um, the, the, the slurred string crossing, which um, is the most obvious problem, 30, 40, the bar 15. Yeah. Um, do you use an open string or a full finger? I use open strings yeah, and so I yeah. teach it hooked and then slurred. So. <laughs> two up bows, which meant that bar 15 and bar 19 were the opposite ways around, which was really horrendous. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good. And then obviously you've got this um, trumpet section. 
where you've really got to get them to keep their one arm and move their three, make sure that the left elbow is mobile. Okay. Yes. And good practice for that would be? Um. Yes. <laughs> that one. That one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Spiccato, you've got 
obviously O'Connor and Children is the first two ups in a row, but that doesn't really help them. So you're really, your minuets are the first time you've got repeated up bows. They're much slower and they're much more beautiful than, well, much more elegant than this. And then this is the first time you've got repeated quaver up bows. And then uh, moving forward through the repertoire, you've got the Beethoven minuet, which has got four at a time at the end of this book. And then in book three, you've got, um, uh, what's it called? The Gavot. Um, thank you. Which again is faster, not many more in one go. And then book four is a massive gap, big hole. Some people teach. Um, no, is it that? I can't remember what it is because I don't do it. Um, but you want to add in a lot more art bows, staccato, practice in book four, and then book five is country dance, which most people will teach on to start with, and then art bow staccato. And then there's no more in the repertoire, so if you ever want them to play Rondo Capriccioso, you need to keep doing it, <laughs> because otherwise they're not going to be able to do it. But that is for level five, so we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, okay, so, so you're... all up the half of the bow for the... So half the bow. I would go from the balance point to half, like the upper half for yeah. the variation. You're using definitely the whole bow for the theme. And then in terms of left hands, oh I forgot Brad Mocha Bot, book six. Um, Left hand, you have uh, obviously just blue finger pattern, G major finger pattern on the theme. Most children will just teach themselves the theme and come back saying, I can play it on my own, uh, even if they're not massively good at playing by ear because they've already learnt it in A, they can mostly just do it. Um, but then in the variation, you've got the red finger pattern on D and G, so you do need to make sure that they can compute that it's B naturals on the G string. In the bar 18, in the variation, mm -hmm. uh, do you put four or three down or just put the four down? Yeah, the three is definitely needing to stay down. So, so all the way through this um, variation, I want the fingers to stay down where they can. So, this finger's going to stay down for ages. So by the time we get to that four, you've got all of them on. if they've just gone up a size for example they might need to release the four for the three but you definitely want them to have the three on when they play that four yeah. 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 but most of mine will play the one on all the way to that A in 19 so that's what I mean by sticky fingers is keeping the fingers down
because it's the more musical thing to do and at the end of the theme they have a retake so but it's your personal choice um very lovely i think one of the top tips for checking that they're doing the up bow staccato correctly is to look if the distance between the stick and the hair is changing so if they're just because like that doesn't sound too bad it's a good violin but most of their ones are not worth all mine is but you know they do sometimes just have a really nice sound and you can't really tell that they're just pushing unless you look for that any different. 
diff more difficult, so they don't really matter. Doesn't really matter. And then can you add the one on the other? And that's where most of them find it tricky is to get the turnaround. I really don't. I really don't. I don't like it when it's just a quaver and two semiquavers. I try and put it a little bit later. But again, sometimes that happens in review. You know, as long as it sounds halfway decent, it's good. So we're just practicing that. And then we add the A so that they get the bow. And then they can do it as a box without trying to reset each time. So I do recommend you use colours to show the, um, the structure of this piece, like I have in my book. You don't need to video this anymore, it's just be on the main video, thank you. Uh, so if you just stick that on the chat sometime, maybe not now, as preview for waltz, bar three. Thank you. Um, and I also do talk to them about calling A and B sections A and B sections in this piece, rather than just green and blue or whatever. So we talk about, well you can see my numbers, that there's A1 and A2, and A1 is the first time bar, and A2 is the second time bar. It's difficult for them to memorise this piece. If you've got tech savvy parents, which I hope most of them will be now that they're all getting younger compared to us, obviously, um, mostly anyway, uh, that they could make their playlist have a few different waltzes, not different, a few times waltz come around. Just to remind you what I'm doing with listening by the time they're approaching like minuet one, I would say, okay, start, add book two listening to the end of your playlist and if you don't have time to wait until the end of book two you know if it's breakfast time and then you're getting ready and it's just on in the background or you have to leave the house before it's finished it's fine but what you want to make sure is that you're listening to book one and then half halfway through book two at least and then as they get to the end of book one they're dropping off the first few pieces so maybe we'll go from perpetual motion to the end of book two and then once they're in book two itself maybe a few pieces in, so around now you would drop the rest of book one, but I would really recommend you keep Gossett Gavotte on your book two listening playlist because they'll need it for review for graduation. And most of them barely scrape it through to get a credit and then they go into book two, so it's kind of half-baked because it's so hard and I don't see the point, again, I don't see the point keeping them on it for months and months and months, getting it really good because they're going to come back to it for graduation. You're not supposed to do graduation until you're well into the next book. So it's the perfect piece to kind of, you know, for me with Gossack, we'll talk about it more when we do it. Um, but I do two lines, a credit for two lines at a time, and then a credit for the whole piece, which may not happen until they're well into book two. And then late, much later we come back to actually refine it for graduation. So it's very much basic version when they first move into book two. Um, okay, the fours in this piece are really weird. I would never play what is printed in bar 13, for example, unless I've got a really horrible E string. <laughs> um, I wouldn't go to a four there. I'd go into a different position if I wanted to play it without the E strings. So I use open E's there, open E's in 15, but then fours in 20 and 21 and the equivalent. So you can see what I do from what the photo is on. What was it? So open opening bar thirteen and what did you say? 15. 15. Oh, 15. Opening fifteen. Because I think for them to find, I guess this comes why the book has that exercise with the fours on page yeah. eleven. If you're going to teach the thing that's in there. That's really important, but I'm not going to teach the fingering, so it becomes that's, less important. That's why I, I, was, I asked you when do you teach this piece, and I know Sarah who only teaches it later, and I, I was thinking that to do it, to use it as a way of introducing shifting is quite, it's quite sensible, because without the shifting it's awkward. Mm. Like, I don't think it is awkward if you just aren't afraid of open ease. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I, yeah, I, I enjoy really listening really. to my students play this and they play with openings at the top and it's fine. Yeah. Um, bow distribution. Mm -hmm. Small bows at the beginning, large bows when it's louder, small bows again when it's quiet. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you know Let's play it to finish. Um, the thing with the bow speeds is that this is slow, fast. And then we've got fast, slow. So that sometimes just kind of catches them out. Kids don't love this piece. Yeah, right. The parents always love it. 